Now on for an examination of the cinema as foreign exchange. Tonight's visions. What happens to the cinema when a country becomes independent? To examine this question, we visited three newly independent states in southern Africa, Zimbabwe, Madagascar, and Mozambique. With little or no television, the cinema in these three African socialist countries is a vital means of information and entertainment. But in each country, what the cinema can do has been defined by the inheritance left by the former colonial powers and by the struggles against them. Zimbabwe achieved genuine political independence only in 1980, and it is here, therefore, that the consequences of colonial and racist regimes are still most apparent. Most of the films that were, uh, the, you know, that uh, were and are still being shown on the 37 houses uh, we have in the country, were uh, tailored to the needs and the uh, desires of the uh, white settler population. While we also were um, excited to watch films and uh, liked films, I guess, like everybody else in the world, it wasn't always easy, especially watching good films because um, of uh, the system which was there under the previous regimes. Well, we did see some of the James Bond films, can you believe it? They used to bring those to the townships and we used to watch them on a wall. Well, in the uh, colonial period, cinema in Zimbabwe was um, controlled by uh, two or three major companies that were themselves deeply rooted in the South African economic system and beyond. They were uh, uh, extensions of South African film organizations. That is still the position even today. Africans are no longer prevented from entering the plush city centre cinemas, but admission prices ensure that the audiences at these cinemas are still predominantly white. The first-run cinemas are owned by two companies. One was formerly owned directly by a major South African film company, but it's now registered in Luxembourg. The links of the other, Rainbow Theatres, are less easy to establish. The market has been uh, orientated to English and American films, and I think that's the way it'll stay. There should be no change to that at all. You said you show English and American films, but isn't it true to say that these films all come through South Africa? That is not correct, no. No, no, no. We get films from England, from America, from France, from Italy, and from South Africa. But don't they come through South Africa? No, they come direct, as well. We purchase a lot of films overseas. I've just been to uh, Milford myself, and uh, there's a considerable number of purchases there for this market. You wouldn't catch me on that. <laughs> the Liberty is Harare's only cinema oriented to an African audience. It shows 16 millimeter prints and is owned by an Asian. At the moment, we are still dependent on South Africa for most of our film supplies, but uh, we are definitely looking at uh, the other distributors direct uh, supply from the uh, UK and America, and we have managed to get a few films direct. They show Kung Fu films mainly, and then, uh, but at times we find that they've got sort of secret agents. For example, this the beach, which they are showing right now, you know. Is that the kind of films you like, karate films or kung fu? Karate films, well, they are too fictitious, if you know what I mean. Really? Yeah. But if, uh, for example, the beach, something that is realistic. Do you often come to this movie theater? Yes, I often come, yeah. Why? What kind of films do they show? Oh, well, usually kung fu. Kung fu? Kung fu, yeah. Is that the kind you like? Uh, not very much, but I like the price. Oh, they're cheaper? <laughs> yeah, they're cheaper, yes. In fact, interests differ. 
but I would see something that is sort of uh, productive. What I'm trying to say is I would like to have something that can help me learn something. It was like the um, love fruits in the African forest and uh, about that. The Love Fruit in African Park, what, where is that film from? Where Do you know where it was made? I think it was from Ghana or Nigeria. And have you, have you seen other films from Africa, or was this the only one you've seen? I, that's the only one I've seen. Would you like to see a film about the Zimbabwean no, 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 no. situation, about the history of the, of the war, or anything like that? Ah, not really. <laughs> not really, that's not, that's not my kind of stuff. Would you like to see more that are from yeah. Africa? Yeah, they are more entertaining than those. From abroad. Why are they more entertaining? Because we know about our own culture and customs rather than seeing those from Europe or any other country. It's more entertaining to see your own culture. Have you ever seen any films that were about Zimbabwe? No, I haven't. Would you like to? Yeah. Most of the films that um, are coming here are coming mainly from the United States. Britain, nothing from France, nothing from Italy, forget the East, nothing from Cuba, hardly anything from other African countries. So basically, we are tied down to the British-American South African axis. The state-owned Central Film Laboratories are probably the finest in independent black Africa. It can process both color and black and white film in both 16 and 35 millimeter. During the colonial and UDI periods, it serviced the domestic and South African markets. Today, it hopes to serve other African states, but payments for film processing in hard currency are seldom a high priority for African governments. It's plain sailing hauling large loads across the country. Prior to independence, the production of commercials for cinema and television here and in South Africa was a flourishing sector. But recently, the demand for filmed commercials has declined. Saving a small fortune in dismantling and reassembling costs. Make it a one-piece move called Thornton's, the name that carries weight. The styles of Africa are yours to wear. We're easy to style. The first commercial was made before independence, and this one was made after. Both were made by an Englishman who has now retired to Europe. Zimbabwe's other main contact with film production was, and still is, as a location for foreign feature films. The offices and set for a science fiction film that was to star Telly Savalas and to be directed by the English novelist Andrew Sinclair stand abandoned on a farm outside Harare. The futuristic transport started out life as the Smith regime's military vehicles in its war against the guerrillas. The film collapsed before shooting started, and hundreds of thousands of Zimbabwean dollars were reportedly lost. Production Services is the Ministry of Information's documentary film unit. One thing I should uh, say about Zimbabwe in conjunction with other African states is the comparison between uh, the British colony and the colony that was for the French and for the Portuguese. The Portuguese and the French actually established cinematographic institutions as a cultural thing and uh, this explains why cinema for example in Mozambique is much more developed than it is in Zimbabwe whereas the British colonies the, the British tended to establish things like uh, production services which you have now and uh, much later things like ZTV and these uh, establishments didn't really have uh, enough uh, takeoff power to, to, to launch uh, cinematographic development within British colonies. 
The only doctor for a population of over 300,000 people is at Gokwe Hospital. Also, conditions at the hospital leave much to be desired. Bad food, few blankets, inadequate drug supplies, and only three showers and four toilets for staff and patients. Moreover, there is only one generator for the theater and the labor ward. The medical staff consists of one full-time doctor, one clinical officer, two sisters, and eight medical assistants. In September 1981, new admissions were five and a half thousand, and the daily patients over 8,000. The hospital has 90 beds, but normally there are over 100 inpatients. The surplus must lie on the floor. The crucial reality is that the hospital, the only one in the whole district, cannot possibly cope with the population. Production services films for uh, quite a long time and up to now, with the exception of my film, have been really films to do with uh, the development of agriculture in the rural areas, uh, what the African is doing in the rural areas and things like that. And there is also a change between production services before independence and production services after independence. Production services after, before independence really was uh, to try and, uh, it, it was a, a, a token uh, kind of uh, characteristic on the part of the wise trying to make the African believe that actually the wise were doing something about the African. And after that, there was a realization to want to emancipate the African more. And the only way that could happen after independence was to show development of projects within uh, the rural areas. Cholocho was one of the areas worst hit by the drought of 1981-82. The lack of rain was not helped by the fact that communal land into which people were pushed during the colonial era is infertile and does not stand well to intense agricultural use even when there are good drains. In a livestock area like Cholocho, cattle had to be overgrazed on small pieces of land available to them. There was not enough land on which to practice paddocking. Hence, the black ranchers' pastures were always exhausted, especially in a drought year. On the other hand, the previously favored white ranchers have vast lands for their cattle where they can practice paddocking and controlled grazing. This imbalance in distribution is in the process of being corrected by government, who is buying land for resettlement of communal farmers. There wasn't really something with a, a defined theme at production services. And I should think uh, my, my film really has is, uh, is marked the beginning of that within production services because it deals with a specific issue. Even at the same time, it also deals with the tradition. It's a specific traditional issue it deals with, which makes the difference. This land is the village now called Norumezo. Nemeso had nothing to eat. The ancestors are believed to have then been giving food mysteriously to their hungry progeny on earth. Instead of Saza, they gave Nemeso insects. They told him that the insects would come every winter and Nemeso and his children would eat and sell the insects. That winter, the insects came and have been coming every winter since then to this forest called Jirire Harurwa, literally the forest of the insects. Round about April every year, the insects start coming into the forest. They are green in color and about the size of a cicada. It is believed they feed on early morning dew and nothing else. The insects are called Harurwa. Once the elders see this, they notify Chief Norumezo by bringing him a few of the insects and a thanksgiving ceremony is held at his home. They are then fried. They turn into a delicious brown color in the process of frying. They are then salted and once salted, they can be served. The potential is as I say, enormous, um, but it's very difficult to say how, whether it's actually going to be viable or it's going to be fulfilled um, in the absence of any serious films being made. So until there's a real start, 
I will be a little bit skeptical about this enormous potential. The wall of this house is tonight's cinema screen. With large rural populations, some form of mobile cinema unit exists in most African countries. In Zimbabwe, the units are run by the government and show mainly documentaries produced by production services. In Mozambique, the mobile cinema units are also run by the government but show both feature and documentary films. And in Madagascar, they are run by private individuals who show feature films. Well, our first film we are going to show tonight is called Ivory King. Zimbabwe is in a transitional phase. The shops in the center of Harare still cater for the white settler population. Government policy has to make the difficult balance between the aspirations of the Africans and the demands of white settlers, so policy for films has not so far been a high priority. The state has inherited the laboratories and production services, but the direction of government policy for the cinema is still not clear. It's not surprising that most people don't have a clear idea. They what we are used to is just what we've been exposed to uh, as, as audiences. And we are left to our own imaginations of how a film is made, or what's involved in it, uh, or how to use it. With independence, it's, begin, it's beginning to change. But um, um, again, even the change is still not quite right yet. Because, you know, although politically things have changed, but um, the people who have been able to come and make movies here, um, were still greatly influenced by um, uh, the people who were, uh, um, were participating in the movie making even before independence. I would like to see this cinema um, emerge as a tool in education and uh, in, uh, in the cultural revolution that I spoke about earlier. We want the, film, the films and the film industry as a whole to be a tool in that process and not just to remain an instrument for capitalism or for uh, uh, base entertainment, which does not raise the cultural and educational level of the people. But in order to do that effectively, we are going in the new year, 1984, to look very carefully at the structure of the film industry as well as the contents of uh, the films that are being uh, uh, that are being imported and that are being produced here. Importing films it means that we are subsidizing those foreign directors, foreign producers who are making those films, and therefore the distributors are paying. Uh, you know, the the distributors get the money here and send it out. I say whoever has distribution has uh, the film. Uh, industry uh, under them. So if we want to have the film industry under ourselves, then we must control the distribution system. Madagascar achieved its independence in 1960, but its neo-colonial ties with France were not definitively broken until the early 70s, when Madagascar left the Franc zone. called Tananarive's market the largest in the Indian Ocean. And although Madagascar belongs to the Organization of African Unity, its population is a mixture of peoples who came across the Indian Ocean as well as from Africa. Film importation and distribution are nationalized in Madagascar, yet people still flock to the country's 42 cinemas. À dire vrai, on n'a pas nationalisé. Uh, C'était plutôt l'institution d'un monopole de l'importation et de la distribution de films sur le territoire malgache. Et ça date de 1975. 
La nationalisation est un bien grand mot parce que les salles sont encore entre les mains de, euh, privées. The Malgash Cinema Office is a branch of the Ministry of Information and Ideological Guidance. It imports and distributes all feature films. Dans la normale, nous devrions importer environ 280 films par an. Dans la normale. Or, avec la limitation de de de, de devises, euh, qui n'est pas propre uniquement au cinéma, hein, qui est propre à, au pays entier, où nous avons un système de restriction budgétaire tout à fait normal, parce que nous sommes en période de crise, eh bien, euh, euh, nous n'importons que euh, environ 80 à 90 films par an. Comment nous faisons pour tourner Alors, à ce moment-là, eh bien, euh, nous nous servons de, de, de deuxième vision, de troisième vision, et nous faisons tenir les films sur plusieurs semaines, chose qui ne s'est jamais fait à Madagascar. C'est une innovation que nous avons apportée. Alors, euh, notre rôle est donc d'importer de, de, donc, des films qui conviennent à l'idéologie que nous avons choisie pour notre pays. Euh, ensuite, de, de, de nous occuper de la promotion du cinéma aussi à Madagascar, c'est-à-dire d'attirer vers le cinéma le plus de gens possible pour qu'ils en fassent un moyen de culture, un moyen d'information, un moyen d'ouverture. The Malgash Cinema Office imports a wide range of films from East, West and the Third World alike. However, French films are heavily predominant and all films are shown in French language versions. No films distributed by the major American companies are shown here. C'est une histoire assez confuse. Je dois dire, parce que auparavant, l'importateur qui avait pour Madagascar, qui était le consortium cinématographique, pouvait importer des films des majors, euh, de la Warner, de la Fox, etc. Et dès l'instant où nous avons institué ici le monopole de l'importation, les majors représentés à Paris ont dit « Nous voulons voir comment euh, se comportent euh, euh, les malgaches vis-à-vis -vis du cinéma en général ». Nous avons essayé beaucoup de, je dirais, de contacts, euh, beaucoup de relations avec euh, les représentants des majors, mais à chaque fois, il y a eu une fin de non-recevoir. Ils nous ont dit, vous dépendez de la MPA, euh, on va étudier votre cas, et jusqu'à présent, bon, ma foi, ils ne veulent pas nous vendre des films. Many people criticize the Malgash Cinema Office for the lack of films from major American companies. Very few understand that this lack is not a result of government policy, but is because of the American majors' boycott. Les majors boycottent Madagascar parce qu'il paraît que ça correspond à une politique adoptée par les grandes compagnies américaines, à savoir, euh, nous ne traitons pas avec les pays où le monopole existe. Nous ne voulons pas traiter avec eux. Peut-être qu'ils ont peur que les prix euh, soient imposés par l'État, auquel cas euh, ils ne peuvent pas imposer des prix supérieurs, je ne sais pas. Mais en tout cas, si c'est une question de disponibilité d'achat avec euh, des devises, bien sûr, je crois que tous les distributeurs qui ont traité avec nous, ils n'ont pas eu à se plaindre. Nous avons réglé normalement les droits d'exploitation, les prix des copies à tous nos partenaires. Et c'est pour ça que je vous dis, on ne comprend pas l'attitude des Américains. Est-ce une attitude euh, éminemment politique aussi Alors là, à savoir, bon, euh, dans la mesure où il y a une option socialiste euh, dans un pays déterminé, à ce moment-là, on ne vend pas des films Ou bien est-ce que, parce qu'ils pensent que Madagascar représente 0,001% de la recette mondiale de leurs films Mais moi, je dis que s'ils étaient de vraiment très bons gestionnaires, même 0,001% de la recette d'un film est très importante parce que ça peut au moins payer peut-être les deux agents qui peuvent se trouver à Londres ou à Paris ou payer le téléphone ou les télex. The National Cinema Office has no monopoly over film production, though it does have its own production unit. In common with other former French colonies in Africa, Madagascar has neither a film laboratory nor sound mixing facilities. The Malgash technicians who work in the production unit see this lack of basic technical facilities as their major practical difficulty and as a symptom of an even more fundamental lack. Quand on a vu plutôt nous techniciens 
nationaux qui sont sur place, notre responsabilité se limite finalement au tournage. Donc, on tourne le film du, du, du moment que les, les pellicules sont impactées et envoyées pour le labo. En principe, ça s'arrête là. Parce que nous, une chose qui est vraiment étrange, par exemple, dans ce film, on n'a pas vu même les rushs. On n'a pas vu les rushs. On attend, pour finir un film de 25 minutes, il, faut, il nous faut au moins deux ans. Puisqu'il y a le va-et-vient de, de l'envoi de Madagascar en Europe, Europe Madagascar. Donc il faut attendre à peu près deux ans. Si ça marche bien, ou si ça ne marche pas bien, le film risque d'être agité. Quoi. Puisque le film destiné à la masse c'est-à-dire pour l'éducation de la masse, peuvent être dépassés par des... dans le temps. Par exemple, un film sur l'amélioration de la culture du café, après deux ans, il y aura une nouvelle méthode de culture du café, et alors euh, le film ne sera plus euh, exploitable. Quoi. Au départ, ce n'était pas l'office malgache du cinéma. C'était un centre de production de films éducatifs. Donc on était euh, à la disposition de, des ministères, de, de tous les ministères qui nous commandent des films disons, sur l'alphabétisation, sur l'élevage, sur l'agriculture et tout. Donc des films documentaires au départ. Et euh, après, bien sûr, euh, petit à petit, on, on voudrait faire des films de fiction et plus longues, mais on ne peut pas parce que techniquement, on est... Jusqu'ici, si on a pu faire des films de, de fiction, c'est vraiment un film de, de copinage, quoi. Entre collègues, on s'entraide se, comme ça, on était même acteurs dans certains films. Dans un coût de production, il y a à peu près 80% en devises, en monnaie étrangère à payer. Alors vous imaginez l'impossibilité pour nous dans les circonstances actuelles, et nous ne sommes pas les seuls d'ailleurs, il y a beaucoup d'autres pays qui sont dans cette situation. Et même si on dit que dans certains pays africains, euh, je ne sais pas, au Mali ou au Sénégal, on arrive à réaliser les films avec ô combien de, de difficultés. Et nous aussi, nous partons du principe qu'il ne faut pas que nous fassions des films qui soient uniquement pour, euh, disons, obtenir euh, un genre d'appréciation, de, de, de faveur de la part des critiques euh, étrangers. Mais il faut que nos films correspondent aussi aux besoins réels du pays. Et puis, il faut que nos films soient réalisés techniquement de façon impeccable. Je regrette d'avoir à le dire, mais depuis, depuis 13 ans que nous sommes là, eh ben, et on n'a pas fait grand-chose. Ce n'est pas à cause de nous, mais nous sommes devenus des fonctionnaires, disons, euh, moi je suis monteuse, mais la dernière fois que j'ai touché à la table de montage, disons, ça relève à 1981. Il faudrait peut-être une certaine politique en ce qui concerne euh, en particulier le cinéma, parce que nous tous, nous avons reçu des formations. Il y en a qui sont revenus depuis des ans. Moi, je reviens de Paris il y a un an. Et depuis tout ce temps, on est là, on ne fait rien. C'est-à-dire qu'on envoie des techniciens en formation. Quand ils reviennent, ils n'en font rien. Euh, C'est assez bizarre. Disons que pour euh, promouvoir quand même au, au cinéma euh, malgache, eh ben, disons que... On disait que personne ne veut se lancer, euh, ni prendre des, des initiatives, ni des décisions. Donc pour moi, je trouve que c'est vraiment une, un problème de politique qu'il faut changer. Il faudrait que les gens qui regardent votre émission ne se contentent pas de dire « Ah, les pauvres là-bas, ils veulent faire du cinéma, mais effectivement, les deux visaient. » Mais peut-être qu'à ce moment-là, pour promouvoir vraiment le cinéma dans le tiers-monde, il faudrait un effort de la part de tous ceux qui s'intéressent au cinéma de ce tiers-monde pour les aider à avoir un peu le minimum qui leur permette de travailler normalement et de produire, disons, des films qui représentent l'aspect de leur civilisation.
The Return was made in 1974 by Sulo Randrasan. It was the first Malgash feature film and was partly financed by French government aid. This sequence from the film is the feast of the ancestors in a rural village. Et c'était pendant la période de formation à l'ORTF, en 71-72, que j'avais écrit le scénario. C'est-à-dire qu'auparavant, j'étais déjà assistant réalisateur sur des films qui traitaient des relations ville-campagne, la migration, la mise en place des paysans dans des, dans des lieux où les grandes surfaces permettaient des cultures. Et à l'ORTF, euh, il y avait, disons au ministère de la coopération, plutôt il y avait un concours entre cinéastes africains et j'avais présenté ce scénario. Je n'y pensais plus quand au bout de un an, on m'a octroyé euh, de la pellicule, la bande magnétique et tous les frais de laboratoire. Après, le problème était de trouver un producteur ici sur place. Il faut dire que ce n'était pas facile puisque euh, personne auparavant n'avait essayé de réaliser ou de produire un film de long métrage à cette époque. Finalement, c'était le consortium euh, cinématographique de Madagascar qui euh, avait financé pour 50% le film. The Return deals with a theme which is often used in African films, migration. But uncommonly, it is a story not of migration from the country to the city, but from the city to the country. The consequences of the migration are nonetheless disastrous. Mandrasan has not made a film since The Return and has chosen not to work for the Malgash cinema office. We asked him why. It's surtout to have a liberty in the writing of the scenario pour avoir, par exemple, le cut end quand on fait un film. Le, le système vous permet de manger, d'accord, mais vous vous châtrez. Benoit Ramomp's film, Once Upon a Time, The Middle West, the second Malgash feature film, was completed early in 1984. Ramomp's career is very similar to Randra Sun's, and, like The Return, the foreign exchange costs of the film were paid by the French government. The film is a study of the dull, local cattle rustlers. Je 
je raconte là, donc, euh, si vous voulez, euh, euh, deux formes de justice euh, qui sont appliquées euh, face à ce phénomène d'Aral, donc, qui a pris des proportions énormes actuellement au pays. The villagers have captured the bandit chief, and the local sub-prefect, a corrupt official, wants custody of the prisoner so as to stop popular justice taking its course. Après ce film, j'espère tout de même qu'il y aura un développement de, du cinéma chez nous. Parce que, bien sûr, d'un côté, euh, j'ai produit ce film, j'ai réalisé ce film, euh, parce que j'avais envie de m'exprimer aussi, d'exprimer des choses. Mais d'un autre côté, euh, j'ai tenu aussi à faire ce film pour essayer d'intéresser le maximum de responsable possible sur la possibilité de réaliser des films de bonne facture et qui peuvent être rentables sur le plan commercial, si vous voulez. Un back problem? It could be your bed. Many back problems are made worse through soft and sagging mattresses. The answer could be a specially designed bed from the Orthopedic Bedding Advisory Service. An attractive double bed with two entirely different types of springing to suit the exact needs of each partner. Costing no more than a top quality standard bed, they are designed and made in our own factories. If you have a back problem or a partner heavier than you, phone 533 anytime for more details. Where do all the pieces fit together to give you the complete picture? The faces, the names, the background stories. Who slots in super offers, wonderful bargains, competitions, letters? Where are details of over 180 hours great entertainment on ITV and Channel 4 every week? Only TV Times. And this week, there's a free 16-page lifestyle supplement to keep you cool this summer. Don't miss it. The People's Republic of Mozambique became independent in 1975 after a long armed struggle between Frelimo's guerrilla forces and the Portuguese colonialists. Films made by Russians, Americans, English, Chinese and others were an important element in Frelimo's international propaganda battle with the Portuguese. We asked the First Minister of Information why the creation of a state film institute was such a high priority. Uh, at that time, we were confronted with many and different problems. It was the question of uh, building, starting the process of building the whole country. So we had problems of organizing agriculture, industry, commerce, uh, housing, edu uh, education, health. So we cannot say that cinema was really a priority. But we consider it to be very important, as we had already done during the armed struggle. And at that time, the objectives were redefined according to the new phase. 
uh, we decided that uh, cinema should be an instrument for conciliating independence, for uh, uh, promoting national unity, and uh, for the victory in the new struggle against underdevelopment. At the same time, cinema should play an important role in destroying the mentality which colonialism had instilled in the minds of our people through centuries, uh, and uh, an instrument for transmitting the new values of socialist revolution. And that's what we did, and uh, that was the main objective of the creation of the ANC. Uh, and the big, big advantage of the creation of this state organ uh, was that it enabled us to centralize and uh, rationalize the use of the scarce means of production which we had uh, and direct them in the right direction. Uh, it was important also because, uh, and necessary, because distribution when we won independence here in Mozambique, there were many films of the most different types, but mostly from uh, pornographic films and reactionary films, and films which promoted uh, the cultural alienation of our people, and we had to put an end to that. The INC, the National Cinema Institute, was set up shortly after independence in 1975. Its premises were formerly a Portuguese social club. Like its Malgache counterpart, the Institute controls film importation and distribution and imports films from all over the world. Like other countries in East Africa, Indian films are extremely popular. Uh, no domínio de importação e distribuição de filmes, a nossa luta durante estes últimos oito anos foi de aquilo que nós chamamos de descolonização do cinema, uh, a tentativa de mudar, uh, introduzir novos filmes com novos valores, diferentes dos que eram, obviamente, introduzidos pelo colonialismo, que eram filmes que veiculavam a sua ideologia, etc. Unlike its Malgache counterpart, the Mozambican Film Institute owns and manages most of the 30-odd cinemas in the country as well as the mobile cinema units. There was very little film production in Portugal, and Mozambique, like its former colonizer in Lisbon, was used to seeing films that were subtitled in Portuguese. The supply of films was not a Portuguese monopoly, as South Africa was also a major source. The competition between supplying countries and the tradition of subtitling made decolonizing the supply of films rather easier than it is in Zimbabwe and Madagascar. Uh, o cinema é uma indústria, uh, é uma indústria bastante cara. Uh, todo, toda a nossa produção cinematográfica depende de importação da tecnologia e importação de todas as matérias-primas necessárias para o processo de produção de um filme. E tudo isso custa divisas, divisas que o país jovem independente com problemas de bandos armados, com problemas de construção da sua própria independência econômica, obviamente não tem essas divisas. Portanto, esta tem sido uma das maiores dificuldades também. E isso reflete também na importação de filmes. Há filmes que consideramos bons e interessantes para o nosso público, mas porque no mercado internacional custam muito dinheiro em termos de divisas, e nós não conseguimos importar esse filme. É o exemplo dos filmes americanos que raramente passam aqui em Moçambique, mas não porque nós não queremos que passem, que podem passar, porque há alguns filmes bons, mas eles são tão caros que nós não temos divisas para comprar esses filmes. The Institute has the facilities to produce both 16 and 35 millimeter black and white films to completion. The technical infrastructure is far from luxurious and the breakdown of a single machine can often halt production for weeks or months. 
toda a nossa prioridade esteve virada durante todos estes últimos oito anos, esteve virada para a formação de quadros. Uh, por isso, contratamos técnicos estrangeiros que vêm fazer a sua formação. Uh, uh, temos problemas técnicos, precisamente por falta de, 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 de quadros qualificados para a manutenção do equipamento que compramos. Uh, temos problemas de ainda não dominarmos completamente toda a tecnologia e toda a, a linguagem cinematográfica, digamos. Então, todos esses últimos anos têm sido uma luta para dominar toda essa tecnologia, que é a base muito importante para se avançar numa produção de cinema muito grande como nós pretendemos e que neste momento não, não é possível fazer. The Institute still manages to make about a dozen documentaries a year, in spite of the shortage of skilled staff and reliable facilities. The INC has its own children's film unit, which makes animation and documentary films. This sequence is from a film about children's games in Mozambique. The Institute's main output is its weekly newsreel, Kusha Kanema. Here, the newsreel unit is filming the rare appearance of a charcoal seller in order to highlight the lack of fuels of all kinds. <laughs> O Tenente-General Sebastião Marcos Mabote dirigiu em Magul um comício com as populações onde foram apresentados 16 bandidos capturados pelas nossas forças. Os crimes deles já conhecemos. Sabem isso, não sabem? Eles não confessaram aqui que cortavam os cheios das mulheres? Não disseram que cada um tem duas ou três mulheres? As mulheres que eles raptam. Não falaram dos machimbombos que atacam e incendeiam com os passageiros dentro e outros crimes que cometem. Tu és enganado pelos boas para vires cortar os cheios da tua mãe, enquanto os cheios das mães dos boas estão intactos. O que é que te põe contente? A intenção de fazer este jornal cinematográfico foi para nós podermos ter nos ecrãs dos cinemas moçambicanos imagens de Moçambique, porque os filmes são todos 
filmes de ficção que são apresentados, são todos filmes importados. A preocupação do Cuxa Carema é dar não só a atualidade, mas dar à imagem que nós transmitimos um certo caráter de permanência dessa imagem, até num sentido histórico. Uh, nesta altura, o Cuxa Carema faz-se, regra geral, o critério é este, é uma notícia de atualidade e uma, uma ou duas reportagens. Mas temos sempre em vista esse caráter de permanência dessa imagem. Até porque o Cuxa Canema é distribuído, sai ao sábado, é distribuído em Maputo, mas a cópia que chega ao norte do país, por exemplo, só chega duas semanas depois, quando os jornais e a rádio já transmitiram toda essa informação de atualidade. Cuxa Canema é uma palavra constituída por duas palavras, uma de línguas nacionais moçambicanas, uma do sul e uma do norte. E significa nascer do cinema. Eu queria, queria referir-me a, a uma questão que se põe, cada, começa a pôr cada vez mais as pessoas que fazem cinema, que é a questão de como comunicar. Eu, é uma opinião muito pessoal. Eu penso que ao princípio, da parte das pessoas que faziam cinema, isto em 76, 77, havia mais a preocupação de, de emitir, emitir uma imagem, uma imagem que era as preocupações de propaganda e preocupações da, da política de Moçambique. Uh, nesta altura, tudo isso se mantém, esse caráter militante mantém-se na mesma, mas as pessoas começam, começam a pôr-se mais do outro lado da questão, da, das pessoas que veem, que veem o cinema. E então tudo isto, te, uh, estou convencido que vai, que, aliás, começam a, começou a haver isso, houve até agora um seminário sobre comunicação audiovisual, que abordou mais problemas propriamente da organização do que, do que este tipo de problemas, mas eu penso que as pessoas começam -se a pôr cada vez mais a questão de como, é que, como estabelecer esta comunicação. Uma comunicação nos dois sentidos, em que o povo apareça, apareça se reconheça cada vez mais na imagem, como, como ele próprio falar e não tanto como a ouvir uma, ima, uma, uma propaganda que, que, que lhe é transmitida, ainda que essa propaganda seja uma propaganda com a qual estamos de acordo, tudo isso. Frelimo is a Marxist party, and politics permeates the output of all Mozambique's mass media. Mozambique, or the treatment of traitors, records a political event typical of Mozambique today. The rehabilitation of the thousands of people who had collaborated with the colonialists, even with the infamous Portuguese secret police, the PIDE. A luta continua! A luta continua! Their names and crimes were posted at their workplaces, and finally they were interrogated by the president, Samora Machel, at a meeting in Maputo. Mas por que tu ficaste da PIDE? Sr. Presidente, várias, várias razões por que fiquei, por que fiquei da PIDE. Primeiro, ambição pessoal. Segundo, dificuldades eh, materiais que eu, que eu sentia, portanto, para concretizar eh, essa minha eh, ambição eh, pessoal. Esta foi uma, da, uma das segundas razões. Terceira razão, porque embora tivesse habilitações literárias, posso se me permitir dizer que nós éramos analfabetos políticos, nunca não sabíamos o que era a independência, não, não tínhamos nenhum sentido da independência. Segundo, outro ponto, havia alienação. O colonialismo eh, tinha instrumentos que possibilitavam, portanto, a alienação da, das pessoas. Quantos, pelo menos, que tu tens consciência de terem sido presos por causa da tua denúncia? Sr. Presidente, não sei efetivamente quantas pessoas, sei que denunciei muitas pessoas, Sr. Presidente. Trying to develop cinema in a country like Mozambique is, I mean, when you, you, you put this problem, I mean, you, you are facing exactly the same difficulties of, an, uh, of any kind of activities that you are trying to develop in an underdeveloped country like Mozambique with very difficult material and uh, human conditions. That's the case in, in, in film in Mozambique. We, we, I mean, we, we came up from nothing and uh, we need to, to develop everything, I mean, in terms of uh, technical infrastructure, in terms of um, human skills, uh, in, in terms of finance, 
uh, and um, all this complexity, uh, namely on this moment where uh, Mozambique is facing a lot of difficulties, uh, contribute to to make very difficult to the development of our cinema. But at this stage, I think that we have achieved certain very important things. I think that we can start to talk about a national uh, Mozambican uh, cinematography based on um, short film, documentary films, but which is a very important thing in, in the order that uh, Mozambican pe uh, some Mozambican people are allowed have locally the condition to produce some things. <laughs> filming in Mozambique, the Institute celebrated its eighth birthday. At about the same time, the Institute was given responsibility for Maputo's television and allowed to begin production of fiction films. This increase of responsibilities emphasizes the question of centralized state production, so we asked the Frelimo party secretary whether this was a problem in Mozambique. I think this problem has not yet uh, appeared in our country. I, I think it uh, is related, it appears only when there is a certain level of development in the cinema field, which we in Mozambique have not yet reached. We, no, no filmmaker has come to us and said, we want, I want to produce my own film, give me support. Everything is produced by the Institute, Institute of Cinema, uh, therefore the problem still does not exist. But anyway, our policy in this area is that, and we have been practicing it, is that we should uh, uh, encourage the creativity of the artist, of the filmmaker, and not to interfere in the process of production. Uh, this does not mean that he is completely free. Our party draws the general orientations and within these orientations, the filmmaker, the cameraman, can produce the film without uh, interference. And when I talk about uh, general orientations, you may ask, what is it? Uh, it's, for example, if somebody wants to make a pornographic film, we say no. If he wants to make a film lauding apartheid, we say no. A film against... Uh, collective production. We say no, it's completely out of question. But the creativity of the producer must be protected and encouraged. This is our policy.
Mozambique or The Treatment of Traitors is just one of the films included in a new season of African cinema coming to Channel 4 in three weeks' time, when The Eleventh Hour presents Africa on Africa, Monday, June the 25th.